The US just switched on the first grid scale sodium ion battery and it's a very big deal, a 3.5 megawatt hour system, so it's not overly massive and it's quietly sitting in a field in Colorado, which is I think one of the most beautiful parts of America, I think. Uh, it could mark the start of something much bigger than uh, LFP chemistry or lithium ion phosphate chemistry. A company called Peak Energy has just brought online a 3.5 megawatt hour sodium ion battery, the largest sodium ion energy storage project ever built in the United States. And it's running at uh, the Solar Technology Acceleration Center in Watkins in Colorado, and the data that is gathered here could completely reshape how America stores renewable energy. Let's jump into it. Hello folks, Ben Alexander here. Thank you so much for, for joining me, I really appreciate that. Thank you to these people on screen, these are the channel members. You're very welcome to join on Patreon, YouTube members, uh, or you can join on YouTube, or you can also buy me a coffee now because I've put that link below in the description. Here's what's happening. So Peak Energy's system uses a sodium iron phosphate uh, pyrophosphate chemistry, that is called NFPP, yeah, that's the abbreviation for it, instead of lithium. And it was an unveiled back in July, it's now officially live, partnered with nine utilities and independent power producers in the region. The goal is pretty simple, and that is to gather real-world data on performance, safety, cost, reliability, and degradation. Commercial scale versions are expected to be rolling out in 2027, so they've got a year or two to find this to get this data together. Now the specs are not enormous, to be honest, and uh, three and a half megawatt hours would not power a city. It's not that much, but it is still very, very big. It's a viable experiment, I think, to get the data. That's not the point, though. So th th this is a grid scale demonstrator, the first of its kind in the US, and it's the proof that sodium ion isn't just lab talk anymore, it's being deployed. Sodium ion batteries have a few massive advantages, even though the ones they've chosen to chosen to use are not the, the most advanced, they've got less energy density, but they're still very, very good. So they work in hot or cold climates without active cooling. They don't need uh, lithium or nickel or cobalt. They use far more abundant materials, such as sodium and iron, which makes them 20 to 40% cheaper to produce. The US actually holds the world's largest soda ash reserves, which is the key raw ingredient in these batteries. So the entire supply chain can be domestic, all within the US, which I guess for the US is a very big deal, right? So that means less dependence on the imported uh, lithium from South America or uh, China, for example, and less exposure to price shocks and political uh, instability, basically. And th that, as I said in my last video, is probably one of the biggest benefits of sodium, along with the cold weather uh, performance, I think. The system itself, according to Peak Energy, eliminates active cooling entirely. I mean, I'm sure they could put it on and it would be a good thing, but they, they've eliminated it. They don't want to use it because they don't see it as necessary, which is probably a very, very good thing if they're happy to accept a little bit of degradation, I suppose. Uh, reduces moving parts and cuts degradation by 33% over a 20-year lifespan. That alone could save more than 100 million US dollars in lifetime project costs compared to the existing lithium ion storage that, which they have got in place or had in place at the beginning of this year and they've now gotten rid of it. The company claims its design lowers lifetime costs enough to make a real difference as household electricity prices rise, uh, projected up 18% nationwide over the next three years. So if you're a utility trying to meet demand uh, affordability, that will make a big difference. And to be fair, who else is going to pay for their yachts? Nobody else can pay for their yachts, so they have to put the prices up. They're forced to. Their hands are tied. So because sodium iron does not require rare earth metals, it's considerably safer and not flammable and uh, dendrite formations, you know, not really a thing for these batteries. So no thermal runaway. That is a huge deal for grid storage, also for cars and house storage, by the way. Uh, lithium ion fires in large systems can burn for many, many hours and release toxic gases and uh, sodium ion cells avoid most of that entirely. That is one reason Peak Energy's CEO, um, a chap called Landon Mossberg, uh, said that their mission is to tackle America's dual energy crisis of affordability and availability and uh, probably lack of yachts or something like that. They're boasting the lowest operating cost of any energy storage system currently on the US market. So just to compare uh, numbers, typically lithium ion grid systems cost roughly three and a half to five hundred dollars US per kilowatt hour installed. Sodium iron is expected to be around 250 to 300, something like that. 
And I think it could actually be less if they actually used the CATL Naxtra batteries, which are currently produced in China, but they're also going to be produced in Europe for 7,500 million people in Europe for electric vehicles and house battery storage and things like that. So that's, yeah, it's roughly 30% cost saving right out of the gate, which is a big deal. For context, China's Naxtra battery cells, they are about uh, 175 watt hour per kilogram and come with all the advantages of sodium ion uh, chemistry batteries. So these American NFPP battery cells, slightly lower, they're actually 140 watt hour per kilogram, but the stability and the su uh, supply security compensate for that, and that's a very big incentive for the US. And again, no lithium, no cobalt, no nickel or anything like that. So another key thing here is operating at solar TAC in Colorado, where extreme temperature uh, swings are a perfect stress test really for these batteries. Sodium ion cells can handle uh, temperature swings from minus 30 up to plus 60 with basically no performance loss. So what does this actually mean long term? If peak energy data holds up utilities across the US, uh, they could begin adopting sodium ion uh, for balancing sodium, uh, solar and wind farms. And ex that's exactly the kind of short to medium duration storage uh, lithium uh, currently winds at. And it's meant for the grid. It's not so energy dense, it's heavy, it's cheap, it's safe, it's perfect for balancing the grid energy to just sort of help with having a bit of a base uh, pumping into the grid basically, especially at five o'clock at night when everyone's going home from work. And that's the point. It's good for the next few years to use this technology to, to help uh, balance the grid out. These cells are too bulky for vehicles because they're only 140 watt hour per kilogram. They're too heavy to, they're just not uh, as compelling really as uh, Naxtra cells from CATL. And uh, as one of the commenters on Electric put, they're quote, too heavy and bulky for cars, but perfect for fixed installations. And uh, the new CATL Naxtra battery cells being produced in seven weeks time actually. Uh, they are brilliant. They are amazing. 175 watt hours per kilogram and they don't have so many of these issues that we've currently got with electric cars where like if you're in Norway for example and you're in winter yeah you'll lose 20 or 30 percent of your range or something like that if it's really really Baltic I guess it depends on the car and the chemistry and where you are. So this is the first real step toward diversifying America's battery supply chain and a lot of people think that the US has become somewhat of a dinosaur compared to to many other parts of the globe. But if you've been following my recent videos about CATL sodium roller in China, this ties very nicely actually, showing the technology is uh, now spreading globally. If we look back at lithium iron phosphate chemistry, LFP chemistry, 10% of cars sold in 2019 used that chemistry. This year, so six years later, five and a half years later, 65%, it's a massive deal. And this will be even quicker. So within three years, four years, I suspect that we'll see the similar, a similar sort of figure from sodium ion chemistry now actually. By 2027, Peak Energy expects to launch full commercial systems. That means gigawatt hour scale storage built with entirely US source materials within the United States. Uh, you know, something lithium uh, supply chains still can't guarantee, even to this day actually, anywhere really. And as costs fall, this could be exactly what keeps renewable power affordable through the evening. Basically it's five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, when the sun has gone down and demand spikes, people are plugging in their cars. So while this might not sound as exciting as a new electric vehicle launch, it is a huge deal for the grid behind the scenes. Think of it kind of like the quiet infrastructure that makes or that sort of supports the EV transition. It is a necessity to have it, not just the electric cars, but also the things that make the electric cars compelling because we want them to be as, as close to green and carbon free as we can, I suppose. But of course, loads of opinions on that stuff and I'm not really getting into that. Let me know what you think in the comments. Could sodium iron storage finally solve the affordability problem for renewables or is this just another battery where they say that and then actually things don't become cheaper but they just slightly improve and we don't really get the benefit but we get a better battery but we don't pay less. What do you think? Are we gonna pay less? Are we gonna pay more or the same? Do you think lithium still has the upper hand for the next 10 years or five years? Are there better alternatives? I know for a fact, quite a lot of you who watch are very, very, very well informed. If you're one of those people, please could you write one of your clever comments because I love reading those comments and actually so many people do. And I like it when people nerd out in the comments just like I do, so it's really lovely. Thank you so much for watching. Feel free to buy me a coffee or join as a member. That would be greatly appreciated. Thank you so much. I do work incredibly hard on my videos. See you in the next video.